a potential job seeker increase. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee, I'd like to look at this article from Yahoo Finance discussing the potential for a job seeker increase to the $40 a day base rate. Now, this is a sensitive topic. There's a lot of people that think that JobKeeper is quite low and frankly it really is. There's a lot of people hoping that it will evolve into universal basic income. Then there's also the risk that if you make our welfare system too generous, it disincentivizes people from working, or as I would put it, it traps people in poverty. You know, the path out of poverty is work, nine times out of ten. Now, if, if you're disincentivized from working because you could work 40 hours and maybe only walk away with $100 after costs and everything extra, well, sensible people need to weigh up those options. It's reality. You know, is the job seeker, are the welfare payments, are they an entitlement that everyone should get just if you're not working? Or is it an emergency payment to keep people out of being destitute? There's the question. Remember, it's not UBI. It's only meant to be a temporary thing. But the, the issue is you may have intergenerational welfare dependence. So you've got people who maybe have never even encountered a role model that's worked. And that's, that's kind of terrifying, to be quite honest. And it's only going to get worse, everyone, because we're entering the first recession in 28 years. Just through Parliament, the job credits or the employment credits have come through. One Nation flipped to support the, uh, the move by the LNP. And there's all this outrage in the media. But you have to think about it like this. Sure, if you're younger, under 35 or what, under 25, you know, people will receive a credit for hiring, hiring you, you know, to up to $200 a week. Now, you need to think about it. If you're over 35 years and you're not worth that extra $100 or $200 a week, then you need to address your skill and your capabilities. You may need to do extra training or you may need to, you know, lift your game. Because generally, when you're first entering the workforce, you, there's a, a time period. There's a cost involved in getting someone being useful. You know, we've, we've been there. We've hired people. It takes time to get someone to be productive. You know, you're generally putting a good three to six months, maybe even longer, before you can get make a profit over hiring, some, hiring someone. Yeah, that's just reality, everyone. Time. So you'd think a more experienced, more mature worker would be more useful. But the problem is there's also the, well, frankly, there's discrimination too. When you hit about 45, it gets harder to, to get jobs. And I know how that is. So it is definitely a messy situation and it isn't a win-win. What concerns me the most is the risk of intergenerational welfare and how you're having people entering the, the job market now during a recession, during a very tough recession. And sure, we're seeing in the news, you know, property is going to the moon, property is going up here, business confidence has returned. I'll, I'll bring up that chart here, everyone. You know, business confidence has returned, but business conditions haven't. I just got off the phone off for a client, you know, they're just finishing up on a, on a big project we worked on. So you can come out and take some photos. I'm very, very impressed. Actually, we were working with this builder. They've done a really good job. And, you know, it's a bit, bit patchy. You know, apparently there's, there's all this talk in the media and it's not really materializing into things. So it depends on who you talk to. It depends on what sector you're just working in, you know, how the economy is going. We're definitely in a K-shaped recovery. There are going to be some people that have got no choice but to go on JobSeeker through no fault of their own. And they want to get off it. So what do, you, what do you think, everyone? Do you think we need to increase the base rate of JobSeeker? Because it is, it is pretty bloody low. There's going to be a lot of people that are, that are going to be on it and realize how are people surviving on this. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has indicated that an increase to the base job seeker payment is not off the table. The job seeker payment, which replaced New Start, is currently $565 a fortnight. However, this was effectively doubled to $1,115 after the 550 coronavirus supplement, which came into place on the 27th of April. I mean, that's still only what, 500 bucks a week, give or take, after tax. I mean, it's okay. But it's not, you're not going to be living your best life, shall we say, on that money. You know, 
and it wouldn't take you much to earn that that much working if you've got a you know decent skills but the problem is you know look at our economy where where is everything being pushed where is every all the innovation being driven into property everyone and that means it's a feedback loop all the innovation is being pushed into property all the people were uh, a significant portion of the the workforce supports the property industry so there's no political will for the government to stop or allow the market to adjust to the real value of property the boost was dropped down to 250 on the 25th of september and yesterday yesterday morrison announced a further extension of the supplement to the 31st of march albeit at a lower rate of 150 dollars per fortnight when questioned by a journalist yesterday on whether the base rate would be raised morrison indicated the government had not ruled it out we haven't made a final decision on that referring to the supplement morrison said he was focused on the emergency measures put in place amid the pandemic there are issues that relate to what you have raised they certainly are but right now what matters is the is the supports that will continue to be provided at these elevated and temporary levels see here the thing is our cost of living is going to start going up we looked at a video recently just with the cost of shipping going up i've got another video i want to look at where you know a former diplomat is warning about the trade issues with china having an impact on our cost of living here in australia and you know this this is the thing it's i mean you're going to struggle you know it's not possible to pay a mortgage on this you're going to struggle to pay your rent sure you get rent keeper and all these other things but this you've got to remember this is designed just to keep you out of destitute that's what it's designed for it's an emergency payment it's not meant to replace your current lifestyle but the problem is in our culture now having the idea of having a rainy day fund it's kind of disappeared no one has it anymore very few people have financial literacy is just out the window it really is and well i blame our schooling system for that we will we will consider those other matters at a later time and now we'll focus on the support needed in the middle of this recession. Several groups have cr criticized the government for not doing enough to support Australians on welfare in the long term and argued that the base rate puts Aussies below the poverty line. A permanent increase to income support payments would go a long way to injecting more money into the economy and relieve the pressure on organizations like Mission Australia who provide emergency relief and homelessness services. Mission Australia CEO James Toomey said in July, we can't per turn back to $40 a day, he added. This will return people to poverty and leave them unable to meet their basic needs. A survey of 600 people by the Australian Council of Social Services revealed more than 80% of people were able to eat better and more regularly, and more than 70% were able to catch up on their bills thanks to the $550 boost. Nearly 59% of people said the boost allowed them to move to better and safer accommodation, and 56.2% said they were able to save up for emergencies. Survey respondents were asked how a $300 cut to the supplement would affect them, and 80% said they would have to skip meals and reduce their fresh food and vegetable purchases. Well, veggies are going to get much more expensive too, guys. Just go carnival, everyone. You know, it's the cool hip diet. And skipping meals, well, you know... Fasting is a part of all cultures. It's kind of lost its way now. Multiple social services, charities, and not-for-profit groups like ACOS, Mission Australia, the Smith Family, St. Vincent de Paul Society, and Cancer Council Victoria have campaigned to raise the rate. Labor Greens, the RBA, and the Committee for Economic Development of Australia also support a higher job seeker rate. Business lobby groups and major professional firms such as the Business Council of Australia, KPMG, Deloitte, and law firms such as Morris Blackburn have backed the calls. So what do you think, everyone? Do you think we should increase the JobKeeper rate? Or should we return back to the $40 a day? Do you think this is it's too generous? Is it Does it disincentivize people from working? What do you think? Have you gotten on it? What's it like out there trying to find work at the moment, guys? You know, I'm hearing I'm hearing mixed stories from depending on who you talk to, what part of the of the construction game, how it's going. Some people are flat out. Some people are, are getting getting bloody quiet, and it's getting worrying. Remember, unemployment is still only what six point nine percent. 
hasn't gone much higher. 40 bucks a day, you know, it, it ain't that much. It really isn't. I, I, I'll be honest, I don't do the shopping that often. Rachel does the shopping. Okay, once a month, we do once a month a big shop. And she goes out there with the kids and just loads up trolley after trolley of stuff at Aldi. And that's how we save a lot of money, buying in bulk. And I mean, this is the thing. We've got a big family now. We've got five children, Rachel, myself, Rachel's sister-in-law lives here and her father lives here. Although, you know, we don't really feed them that often. They probably have one meal with us every, every day or every other day. But there's an advantage having so many of us because buying in bulk really makes a lot of sense. You know, we'll cook half a dozen, dozen eggs for breakfast and a kilo of bacon, and that's enough for everyone. You really get your money's worth. But when it's just the two of us, you could just buy just as much, and you're wasting a lot more food. 40 bucks. I mean, what can you get for $40, guys? You know, what's bread's gone up. Everything's gone up. Cheese has gone up. Fruit and veg are going up. Petrol is getting more expensive. Let me know. I, I still think of prices as when I first moved out of home. So whenever I go shopping, I'm shocked at how expensive everything is. I'm hard-coded to that now. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions, guys. Should we raise the job seeker base rate? Or is it a risk of disincentivizing people from working? Or is it kind of irrelevant because we're entering a first recession in 28 years and a lot of people are going to be left high and dry because, well, our culture of saving and preparing for rainy days has disappeared. And what advice would you give to people who are on Job Seeker for the first time to try and make ends meet and to, you know, keep going for when things turn around? As always, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can use any of our affiliate links you find below from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says or Teespring. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next episode.